So my name is Jeremy Mansfield, uh, Summit County Commissioner of District 16. I am the chairman of the Legislative Committee. Um, I'm here on behalf of uh, the county, the Legislative Committee, on, on behalf of County Mayor John Isabel, back in August, requested that I put this <clears throat> item on our agenda um, back in September. So this has been an okay. ongoing uh, thing for quite a while. Um, and the reason is, is, is for a clarification of improvements to the Hennessville Library. We have our library director here, and this was born out of an issue where the AC unit was broken and not functional. Um, this summer, and everybody's pointing directions of like, whose responsibility to fix it, and nobody knew. And people were saying it's the school board's responsibility to fix our Hennessville Library, which was puzzling to everybody. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a bizarre situation. Um, we're, we're here basically to try to fix or, or bring clarification to a problem that predates every single person in this room in your official capacity at the city of Hendersonville or other county or at the library. I think this is all 2015, so none of us were here then. Um, so the issue is, um, and so that what happened is that fell through the cracks of getting that that fixed. And we're like, well, who, whose responsibility is it fixed? Why is the school board fixing it? And the school board kind of was fixing it. And then I found out that Basically, the AC has been broken for several years over the uh, um, the meeting room, which is why it's been hot in there for so long. And, and the previous um, library director and, and staff, I guess, had not really, a, because it was kind of a vague question, didn't know where to go. So they just didn't go anywhere, is my understanding. And so what we're trying to, and then the elevators broke, which put the county and the city out of ADA compliance because we're as co-owners of this library. So that's another problem that we weren't able to serve our patrons correctly. Uh, we were in danger of shutting down the library. So the, the ask from the county mayor was to basically re revisit our resolution from 2015 um, about how do we make sure that the library, the director, the patrons don't fall through the cracks. That's pretty much simply all we're trying to do um, and address the ambiguities of that. And I will clarify that Hendersonville is the only city library where there is joint ownership with the county. It does not exist anywhere else. Uh, the, Henderson, the county outright owns Gallatin Library, mm -hmm. Millersville Library, and the uh, Westmoreland Library. The city of Portland owns their library outright. The county does not maintain or control that building at all. Uh, the county is just responsible for the faculty and staff of that building. Um, so as far as, and the county is obviously responsible for the building to be owned, this is a unique situation when this building was built, according to the Comptroller's report, which is at the very last of the binder uh, paper um, this this stack, it's at the very, very end. Control report 2014 basically said that there was a problem with, originally the intent was to the city to give it over to the county, and the city did a joint ownership, so we're co-owners on the, the quick claim deed is here by resolution as well. And the resolution basically talks about how the city is to maintain, but, you know, when it comes in, it's our law director's position as joint owners, when there's something breaks, that both parties come to the table and split the cost 50 50. And so I know uh, that the city mayor Clary has, uh, I have his email um, here yes. at the top of the binder where I, I think he's disputing that and doesn't feel that that's necessarily the case. So we're just trying to figure out so, where, the, where the responsibilities lie and just we're trying to make sure that they don't have any failures. In, tell in me where service. it does say that there's a 50 50 split on anything other than routine, ma routine maintenance the city is taking care of. I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, ask our law director to... Uh, that, that's going to go all the way back to just ownership of the property. Well, show it to us. Yeah, uh, we, we, yeah, we asked for evidence that the city had covered half the cost of non-routine maintenance in the past. We asked for a resolution or agreement for other county libraries that specifically that specify cities will cover the cost of non-routine maintenance and evidence that this has been done. So tell me again, you are... The county and, and the city own Hendersonville. What are the other county libraries that you're responsible for? The, the We're only library. responsible for Gallatin, Gallatin, Westmoreland, and Millersville. Okay. And that's it. And we own those outright, so there is no agreement with the city because the city doesn't maintain them. Do they donate um, to annually to Yes, the and you, you, that is on this report from the, uh, uh, the maintenance of efforts from the comptroller okay. on the responsibility for all the cities for what they are actually donating to the libraries as well as the county's maintenance of efforts. So there's an MOE test okay. for the libraries that everybody is beholden to. 
um, as part of this process. So it does show the donations that those other cities do put. Uh, put. Like, for example, Portland donates twenty-seven thousand five hundred, but this, the, they they own the building, they maintain everything. They still donate to the county part portion. Uh, the Hendersonville Library is approximately nine hundred forty thousand dollars to operate this year. So the county, the city of Hendersonville, is obligated for fifty. We get about twenty thousand dollars in grants. So uh, seventy thousand dollars is is uh, reduced from that amount. Um, so that is uh, so. But the county is is, is currently paying you know, eight hundred and uh, uh, seven thousand dollars approximately. Um, but only because Henderson was doing 50 and that we get state grants for uh, 2020. But, you know, the, the resolution, I guess, it talks about the maintenance and effort of, of the maintenance. So I guess the ambiguity in the problem is like, what's defined maintenance? Because like, when, when, did, we, we what, it, when did it become ambiguous? Well, I, I guess it, it really became ambiguous in, like I said before, in August okay. when the air conditioner broke mm -hmm. and then the elevator broke and we're like, well, who fixes this? And it was, appreciate it, that. It's but for, for several years, there was no question of who was responsible for something like that. Am I correct? No question. About, no, I, I don't think you're correct. I, I don't know. What would you mean? No question about whom? We just have found out that nobody's really been taking care of it. So we're just trying to so, we're okay. trying to bring clarification. So when you talk about the elevator, you talk about the uh, the HVAC. OK, but for there was no ambiguity for several, several years of who would take care of large items. Am I correct on that? I'm saying the question was well, never posed. My question was please. there was no ambiguity. I don't it was, know how they were functioning. The libraries. So they functioned well with y'all providing 100% of the cost. Am I correct for several several years? And then suddenly the ambiguity I can't became say that's correct or not correct. You've had a lot of time to do some research for us. I don't do research for you. I'm only here to try and get us moving forward. That's going to be hard if you can't provide us some information we've been asking for for four months. I don't have any information I need to provide you that so, you shouldn't already have. So what we're hearing is that there was no hold on. So what we're hearing is that there's no evidence that we have helped with non-routine maintenance for several years. Your words. And we're also hearing that there is nothing that says that there are no agreements that said the city, any other cities, uh, would do anything like this. I, I have a resolution from 2015. Yeah. Correct. And uh, and under items uh, number four, it says the city will continue to provide routine maintenance, landscaping, and other support services. That seems pretty unambiguous to me. So I guess can you show us the receipts mm -hmm. where the city has provided the routine Happy maintenance? To. So I mean, to. I mean, because like there was an item in our budget this week that yeah. where so we're doing maintenance, and we're, we're, it was a, a two hundred dollar appropriation from the county okay. to provide maintenance. So, Happy to. And so to answer your question, I don't work for you. As you, the, the answer you gave me, I'm happy to provide those. What I'm going to ask you, though, is I'm going to ask you for previous receipts where the county provided 100% of the cost for those big ticket items. I assume that those exist because this is not the first time there's been a big ticket item for the county. So I'm going to provide you receipt, receipts showing us that, showing you that we've been doing routine maintenance. I'm asking you to show us receipts that y'all have been handling the big ticket items for several years. Yeah, I'm I glad to get that from our finance director. Okay, sure, um, sure. I have to get it from him. But sure. again, this is all new. Right. We just have a library director who is basically um, in patrons who are unable to use the library and in duress. And because y'all won't fix your stuff, you're supposed to fix. Well, that's your opinion, but our, our position is you're not helping fix the things that we think you're statutorily or resolved by resolution as determined re about required. three months ago. Well, because we finally started digging into it just because we're digging into it now doesn't mean that it's been doing been right the whole time. So you find problems, you, you address those problems. That's how it works. Uh -huh. So in addition to we're going to get you those receipts, you're going to get us some receipts. But what also might have to help is if you all propose an alternative to that. Well, that's kind of, we just wanted to, the whole intention that we've been trying to do this since October is get this meeting or something similar. Yeah, you, yeah. you could have come in October, November. So, um, yeah, I, I reached out to you. I mean, you declined and so said to come here. So. Well, I didn't want to meet privately because I don't think that is appropriate. I wanted you to meet publicly so everybody, our finance committee could ask you. Yeah, which is great. I appreciate yeah. that. It was wonderful. I don't know why you'd want to meet pub privately on something like this. That's sort of very, very odd We want to do that. So I, I think it's very odd for, for you to also do that as well on previous items, which I've called you out on. If we want to go there, let's go. There. Let's don't go there. Um, where are we on the elevator uh, being fixed? We have an elevator. The elevator was completed today. Okay, and, mm -hmm. and we have agreed, Mayor, how much have we agreed to help with About that? About $2,300, I think it is. Okay. Although we want to make sure that that is not the final say on that, that we think this is something that should be reimbursed to the city because we're not responsible for that. And we've yet to find evidence that we've ever been responsible for something like that. Okay. 
have a question. Sure. Or just a real, real just, quick. But I think it, feel free to give us give us a proposal. Yeah, that's kind of what what the, the intent is to start a discussion. That gives what us what does Henderson want to do? So, you know, and that's why I tried to do this meeting several okay, months ago. So okay. uh, it's, it's just You've got how do we make sure that this doesn't fall through the cracks? And what who's really responsible? Because even the comptroller admits this is kind of vague and ambiguous. Well, so. based on this live, oh, can you give us that letter, the information from the comptroller that it's vague and ambiguous? It is. So the comptroller and says that this be should be in the packet. So that's feel free to correct me. So. Well, we don't um, need to hear the comptroller says it's vague and ambiguous if that's, if that's not what the comptroller says. Well, my, I don't have it in front of me, so I can't quote so My apologies. I'll retract that statement. Okay. Glad to, so, uh, if you correct that on the record. You've, so. got, you've got four. Thank you. Can I see that page, that resolution there? Yeah. This is the only statement I make because I am just really hearing about the not hearing about this for the first time but really digging into it the first time and this is the first time we've been able to get together and thank you for bringing this and, and highlighting this but it does say on here oh okay it does say on here other support services that to me is pretty ambiguous um i don't understand what other support services means it could be non-routine maintenance which is why i for, asked them to show us proof that we've helped we've provided costs we've provided right. financial help in the past so i think um good and question maybe this is something that we need to work on together we need to make it very clear what the responsibilities between the county and the city are and so we need to put i appreciate that that, that that you're saying that but i'd like to ask uh, mr ray what you thought about the statement that's in this resolution uh, about routine maintenance. Yeah. Well, number four. What is my interpretation of routine yeah, maintenance? Yeah, I mean, and the fact that for nine years mm -hmm. we have not paid, we have not been responsible for anything that's failed, that's failed, like an AC unit or a toilet or. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've done a lot of leases, and you have routine maintenance as part of every lease but it usually goes into by way of an example yeah. you know um, uh, a, a minor plumbing issue or uh, um, you know some things like that that isn't structurally or whatever mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. unfortunately what we have here is something that just says routine maintenance yeah um, and yeah, I know nice. I have an opinion about routine maintenance I know Mr. Stittler probably has one and I bet if we switch seats I bet we would have different opinions on what routine maintenance is <laughs> Um, but um, generally, that wouldn't be to systems and the structures of a building, but in the general sense. So, um, in my opinion, as as I think of and have done um, or have uh, drafted leases and reviewed leases that talk about uh, routine lease routine maintenance, but uh, I think maybe um, what we should be doing also is just trying to figure out who is willing to be responsible for what and right. see if there's some common ground and, and maybe we enter and we, we, we draft a, a, an agreement, an agreement. Yeah, uh, that is more specific that outlines um, our duties and responsibilities of, of each party. But I don't, that's, I don't know what that looks like. So. We wouldn't have our difference in a lot of things, but I do think we both agree that if y'all send us an agreement, we will absolutely consider it. Well, that's, that's yeah. the whole, I just yeah. want, this is just to present you to let you know, hey, this is what we found uh, uncovered. How, it's ambiguous. We think it is. If you agree, you don't agree. That's fine. But how do we partner together to make sure that there's? A, and and I'll, I'll, if, you, if you even have the library director speak, I would like to give her an opportunity. Just the frustration she's experienced in this process of falling through the cracks, and we're just trying to help her and equip her the best way possible, so she doesn't experience this again. That's all our goal is. Is it okay if she can just address sure. the yeah. Sure. Yeah. members? All right. So when I um, was voted in as director of the library, there, well, when I began at the library, the HVAC was not functioning. Um, when I became director of the library, I made steps to correct this issue and could not find out who last serviced it. When was it last maintained? couldn't find any records, began to reach out to both city and county because I don't know who to reach out to. Um, not the director before me, but the previous director, Diane, mentioned that the school board was involved, and this is because we have a ge geothermal unit, and apparently the, the school board is the only people who could deal with that. That is no longer accurate. I now know that. Um, the issue became 
when I did get the repair people out, they mentioned the lack of maintenance within the, the system and the, I don't know what they're called, the tubes. The coils. Right. It was so bad that it caused leaks once all the debris and dust from the neglect came through and caused some damage within the library. Um, we just sought to find who do we need to reach out to to get this, where can we find where it was maintained, and how do we go forward um, in doing this. The elevator, once it went down, um, trying to find out, you know, was this a county issue, is it a maintenance issue, and did it just break? We didn't know because we couldn't get a repair person out, because we couldn't get a repair person out until we had somebody accept responsibility for it. Um, for we just got the staff elevator fixed today it went down in august and when our public elevator went down right after the tornado because it shorted out our electrical system uh that was fixed that day because it did become an 88 issue uh, as soon as i got to the library found out that the elevator wasn't working i called and said that we can't open until it's fixed so within a couple of hours county came out or county sent somebody out to fix it we just really want to know so who do we go to? And ever, not saying that it wasn't done, I can't find records. Um, whether the previous director didn't keep them, didn't explore our options or whatever else, I have no evidence. I just want to know what to do going forward and who to call. So there's not a runaround and there's not that frustration or tug of war. Ms. Minchum, I've got to run. Okay. Send me something. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank and you. if you have any questions about any of that, I'm happy to Thank you. Sure. I don't know about any of y'all, but I run mine to failure, so there's no maintenance ever done on mine. <laughs> 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 well, um, I would so, like, but that'd be a good question like, as far as like maintenance, just that that's routine maintenance. <clears throat> the elevator hasn't been expected, and the city center is supposed to do that. Uh, we're trying to figure. Well, that out. we need we need a comprehensive list of what. We should know what you should do. Well, that's what we're trying to figure out. Okay. If I, if I may real quick, because the mayor and I have some history. Um, the only point in my appearance here is I want this to move forward. If the roof needs to be replaced, I mean, we're, get, we're getting down to some serious issues. And I'd much rather us hammer them out now than call on somebody to fix the roof. So that's my only intent here is to what are we going to do moving forward? I think, Karen, I think is there a vehicle we can... Um, like, uh, we can send this off to so that these things can be I, I think, hashed out. I think I would I would like to propose that you guys work on something, get it to us. We'll look at it, add to it. You know, is that okay? Can, can we have like a working document? Sure. Let's do that. Great. So we'll. It's in your court to get something back to us. I really appreciate you coming. Yes, thank you thank for taking so your time. Mm -hmm. sure. thank, you so thank you, guys. Uh, yeah. Motion to adjourn. Yes. So moved. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, Eric, let's talk.